Hey guys, Cronus Falls here, and today I'm going to be bringing you a champion guide on Apothecary. Now, Apothecary is probably the most famous rare out there, one that everyone seeks to get early in the game, and for good reason. This guy is like a legendary among rares, and I'll show you why. So first off, doesn't seem like a big deal, but his A3 attacks three times at random. This allows him to be a giant slayer champion instead of war master when you do your masteries. So coming into clan boss as well as dungeon bosses, he can put out more damage, which is amazing. This pairs well with his A2, which heals a target ally by 35% HP. Not amazing on its own right, but it can be critical and books down to a two turn cooldown. So every turn, if he crits, that could be, or every other turn rather, that could be a 70% heal, which is just massive. It's insane. He keeps people up, keeps people going. He also brings a 30% increased speed buff on all allies for two turns and fills their turn meter by 15% on a three turn cooldown. So an amazing turn meter booster. Couple that with his defense aura in dungeons by 21% and this guy is a beast. He brings so much to the table. He keeps your team moving quick, getting turns out before the opponent, keeps their defense up, keeps them healed, puts out some damage with his uh, giant slayer he is just an amazing champion so let's go over the build so i have him in all speed sets which is exactly what you should be looking to do with this guy so mine is kitted out for a clan boss so he's a little slower than i would actually recommend having him that being said though he's at 257 so clearly no slouch if you are running him in arena then obviously you would be wanting to get him closer to the 300 speed range but if you're that far, you probably already have your Arbiter anyways, so uh, boost her speed, not his. <laughs> 257 is amazing for dungeons. He goes, takes a lot of turns, and it's great for clan boss as well when you have him in defense percent gloves, defense percent chest, and speed boots. So that allows me to get his defense here over the 3800 mark, which is very good for clan boss. Another nice thing about him is that he does not require any sort of accuracy. So you can get him in a defense ring, defense amulet, and defense banner without any worries. If these were 6 star, I could have him up over 4k defense and we would be rocking. So let's go ahead and get into masteries here. Now masteries are uh, pretty standard actually. Um, the reason that it's going to be like this, I'll show you, is because he's not in lifesteal gear, but I do have him in clan boss. So I have him with the crit rate. That's pretty much always how you want to start on the offense tree. And since his heal can crit, it's very nice. Crit damage, not a big deal on him. He doesn't hit hard and crit damage does not affect the heal, but we go for it. And then Life Drinker. So since he's not in a Life Steal set, I do have him in Life Drinker so that he can steal a little bit of HP with his Giant Slayer procs. Bring it down just to do a little bit extra damage against the clan boss. Methodical, so his A1 does more damage each time he uses it. And then Kill Streak, we only have on here in order to get us to Giant Slayer. So Giant Slayer, again, he has a 3 hit A1, so he can pump out a little bit of damage with that. He doesn't use his A1 too often, but it is still nice to have. Now, like I said, he does not require any accuracy, but the reason I bring him into the support tree is actually for lasting gifts down here. So lasting gifts, it's allowing me to increase his speed buff, which is very nice, along with Lore of Steel, which lets me increase his speed. Since he's in a three piece speed set, this does provide quite a bit and is very nice. The rest of this doesn't matter too much. It is nice to get a little bit of turn meter boost on his buffs. But overall, those are what we're going for here. So, that being said, let's go ahead and get into some content. So, uh, he's not a campaign farmer. He's not going to bring a whole lot for you there, although he can definitely help you three-star it along the way. But dungeons is where he really shines. He can come into any dungeon for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at Ice Golem first. And let's see, I don't really want to run this team here, so let's go... Uh, we got Apothecary in there already. I think I'm going to put in a Kale. Where is he at? 
Okay, 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 there we go. Reliquary Tinder for our revives. And let's do Stagnite for our defense down. So this is, actually, you know what? I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna bring Madam Saris. Could bring Stagnite just as well. The reason I'm going to do this is just to speed it up a little bit so we're not on this fight too long. But let's see it here. So besides Madam Saris, this team is completely attainable. These are all rares coming in on Ice Golem 20. And Apothecary really makes it happen because he's helping us to take two turns to their one. It's really just going to help us uh, sustain as well as just helping us to uh, take more turns. The more turns you take, the bigger advantage you get and the more you can spiral the fight in your favor. As you can see, we've already got Greybeard going for his third turn there. Uh, only getting one freeze out, so not a good RNG session for him, but that's fine. We're making our way through here pretty quick. So we're probably going to be looking at about a minute, maybe a minute 15 on this wave clear. Man, no freezes coming out this time. Okay, Greybeard. I guess he uh, didn't come to play today. That being said, as you can see, we're in no danger of going down to this wave, which is normal. Uh, next wave is where we could potentially see someone going down because of the reflect damage, but Madam Sarah should help with that, and Reliquary Tender can pick up anyone who does happen to go down. So it looks like a minute 15 is going to be dead on. And we are on to the next wave. Alrighty, so we come in here, let's see if we can get some freezes up. There we go, we got a few. That's looking better, so we should be able to get through these guys. Unfortunately, the two that weren't frozen are the ones who put up the reflect damage. But that is okay, because our team is going to be looking just fine here. Got some heals on us from Reliquary Tender and Apothecary bringing the spot heals. So now we're looking beautiful. Madam Saris is back up to full health. And we are moving it along. So you'll see, I'm going to be bringing uh, Apothecary into every dungeon in this video, but I actually bring him into every dungeon anyways. He's just an amazing champion, even in end game. He brings so much to a team with his increased speed. And he's just helping us spiral these turns. As you see, everyone is rocking close to 200 speed, so they can already be taking about two turns for every one the enemy takes. But with turn meter boosting and speed boosting, like, I mean, we're getting close to three turns for every two or every one that these people take, which is just crazy. All right, so we're on to the boss here at about 2.30. And, I mean, he's not going to really be doing anything different here. You know, he's just going to be speeding us up, keeping us going. This is going to be a long fight, so I'm just going to go ahead and skip to the end of it and show you how we come out. Alrighty, so we're coming up towards the end of the fight here, and just look at this turn meter, and you'll see why Apothecary is important. I mean, look how many turns we're taking in the amount of time it's going to take him to take one turn here. Like, all of our team has rotated once, and he's gone maybe half of his turn meter. Going again, full rotation. Greybeard's attacking again, we're attacking again. It's just crazy. The more speed you have, the more you can snowball a fight. So that's what, Apo what Apothecary is in here for. He's speeding us up like crazy. He's an amazing rare. And you really see the effect of it when you're in a boss battle. Just that extra speed means everything. So there we go. 6 minutes, 40 seconds on Ice Golem. It's not quick, but it is very, uh, very safe. No one was at any risk at any point, so we were looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and get on to the next dungeon. So we're going to come in here to Spider's Den. So Spider's Den, uh, level 20, is notoriously difficult. Uh, this is the team that I'm normally running in here, but Apothecary can definitely come in and shore this up. So let's see, we've got my old team that I was running, which is definitely attainable for most people, um, except for maybe Miscreated Monster. Yeah, he is an outlier. He does make this work a lot better, but uh, I've shown workarounds in other videos, so you guys can check that out. But for this, it's going to be a turn meter control strategy. So we're coming in here with Apothecary speeding us up, two Armagers to deal with the turn meter, we got shields, we got a slow, we got decreased defense and attack. We're going to be looking beautiful, so let's get into that. 
And this team does not work at all without Apothecary. He needs to be in here speeding up these Armagers because if they're not going fast enough, they can't keep the spider's turn meter down like you will see. So boom, knocking it down, getting some big hits in from the start. We should get a slow from Stagnite right here. Beautiful, and then we're gonna get more turn meter decrease. And these guys are both rocking War Master, so every time they come in here with their A1, uh, well, 60% of the time they'll proc that, and then they can just kind of whittle the spider away, so it's death by a thousand cuts. And so Apothecary, like I said, making it all happen, that 30% increased speed is amazing. I mean, that affects not just their base speed, like an aura, but it's actually the entirety of their speed. So when I have an Armager like this one that's running at 190 speed, and he's coming in with an extra 30%, that's like... 50 something extra speed that he's going in with so it is just an amazing buff i think people often underestimate especially if they're new players the effects that speed will have so speed is probably the most important stat in the game if you're not going fast if you're not controlling the turn economy then you are losing and apothecary brings that and that is what makes him a legendary among rares so as you can see, we're a minute 28 in, we're about two thirds of the way through this turn meter and uh, the spider has never looked like she's gonna take a turn. This created monster is just keeping all of the uh, armagers looking healthy. Those shields are not gonna be going down. Looking good. So I think we're going to be looking at about a 2 minute 30 second run here. As I said, uh, it is a death by a million cut strategy. It is not quick, but we do get some big hits like that every once in a while. So Armager is going to be coming in here for another hit to knock down the turn meter. This guy for another one. We're low now, so when the Armagers come back around, if the turn meter is low enough, we should be seeing a big hit. Or if the health is low enough and they feel like they can finish her. So let's see. So there's one drop, and let's see, can we get a big hit here? Nah, the turn meter's too high, but he might do it anyways. There we go, 377, that is it. Spider 20 done in two minutes and 31 seconds. Apothecary making it happen. If I brought Arbiter into this spot, she would not be able to do it. She does not give the increased speed buff and therefore does not boost us up as fast as we need to be going. So that's Spider. Let's go ahead and get into Dragon now. So Dragon's 20. Let's see here. Uh, this looks like a pretty solid team we got set up. So we got, uh, well, we don't want Jerrigan here. Actually, we want Apothecary as our leader, giving us that defense. And then we probably want uh, our Greybeard. Where is he? There we go, giving us our CC. Miscreated Monster obviously works very well in this, and that's what I would normally have in here. But as you see, boom, we're taking our second turn before they take their first, thanks to Apothecary. So we've got two freezes up. We don't have to worry about either of them coming in and hitting us this turn, which is very cool. Frozen Banshee taking a little bit of a beating, but if she does happen to go down, that's what Reliquary Tinder here is for. Also Apothecary topping her off, so we're looking good. Get that increased defense now, but we got it cleansed, so we are looking pretty good. We got a couple more freezes online. Speed again. So we are just lapping these guys easy. Should be getting through this wave probably about a minute 15. Actually going really slow here, uh, but that's because we have Frozen Banshee in here. I forgot she does do it a lot slower than Kale. That's okay, though, that we're not looking for speed on these runs. We're just looking for consistency if we're going for an Arbiter. So once you do get Arbiter in, um, I guess that's probably what people wonder. Like, is my Apothecary even going to be worthwhile anymore once Arbiter is in? And I would say definitely yes. Uh, Arbiter does not bring a speed boost. Like I said, I would not bring her into this team over him. I would bring her in here with him. And potentially uh, in a different setup, she could work better, of course. But uh, my main team, I actually do bring both of them in. 
And that's so we're taking tons of turns and we really want that 30% increased speed boost along with the turn meter boost from Arbiter. She doesn't bring that, which makes her a little bit weaker as far as total speed boosting goes, in my opinion. Um, she does obviously outshine him in the arena, and that is because she has a speed aura coming in, as well as an immediate 30% increase in turn meter. So when you're trying to just burst people down, she does do a better job of that. But for something like this, where you're doing a sustained fight, uh, you're definitely getting more speed out of an Apothecary overall. Look at all those freezes coming in, it's beautiful. So looks like we're going to be getting through the waves here, probably around the three minute mark, I would guess. We got this Horden about to go down. There we go. In this team, no one is built for damage. Uh, Tayrell is probably the closest thing to it, but if you check out his build, uh, it is just defense. There's no crit rate, not really any crit damage. He is just in there to put that decreased defense on for us. Reliquary Tender's not even mastered either, so she's not coming in here with War Master. Uh, Greybeard doesn't have War Master, so that definitely slows down these runs, but we should be getting into the Dragon just fine. So probably 3.30 actually, maybe even a little bit longer, this is crazy. But we're going, we're looking good, everyone is healthy. Apothecary keeping people topped off when needed. So this guy should be going down right here. Oh, one more hit. There we go. And we are looking good. Wow, 345 is what we're going to end up looking at on the waves. That is insanity. Uh, you could... I mean, I assume pretty much anyone out there coming into Dragon is going to be doing a little bit better than that on Waves. Dragon might take you a little bit longer than it will for this team because Frozen Banshee is just a monster. But, uh, yeah, so... The thing with Apothecary here, as you saw, my whole team took two turns before the Dragon here. Not all of them have over 200 speed. Frozen Banshee's at, I believe, 192... Uh, Tayrell is over 200 actually, so pretty much all of them are over 200 now that I think about it, but Frozen Banshee is not. So if Apothecary wasn't in here doing that speed boost for us, she would not be going two times before the Dragon does. And I mean honestly, most people coming in here to Dragon 20, their people are probably going to be closer to like 160 speed. So I mean 160 speed, I believe Apothecary could help you go twice before the Dragon because the dragon's rocking 100 and something, like low 100 and something. So it is pretty crazy how much that helps. We're going to be taking out the dragon right here, it looks like, as soon as he takes another turn. And we're going to be looking at a 5 minute run overall, which is not bad going into the dragon. And there it is. Alrighty, so if you're going for an Arbiter, this is definitely a team that can work for you. Now we're on to Fire Knight. And once again, we're bringing him in here. I bring him in here. This is my main team. And even though he is the wrong affinity for Fire Knight, he still does amazing work in here. So we're going to go ahead and get into it right now. I'm going to keep Roz and Scarhide in there because, uh, first of all, this team is definitely my most consistent. I could be looking at a loss if I switch it up too much. And second of all, Rosin Scarhide is a free-to-play champion. You can fuse him, so uh, anyone out there can get him, assuming that they play long enough to get all of the rares necessary. Fire Knight 20 was definitely the most difficult dungeon for me as far as clearing it to get to my Arbiter missions. I was able to do Spider 20 without too much of a hassle once I got these Armagers online, but it really took a lot of fine-tuning in order to get the... Uh, Close to, well actually, to get 100% win rate took quite a bit of fine tuning. I think when I got the Arbiter mission, I was only clearing something like 25%. It was crazy. But now with the release of Stagnite, it is definitely a lot more consistent. But through that whole process, Apothecary was always on my team because he's amazing for Fire Knight. He's coming in here with a 3 hit A1. He's making us go faster. And the more turns you can take against the Fire Knight, the better you're looking. 
because you can easily drop his shield if you take enough turns. Speed is probably the most important thing for the Fire Knight dungeon, honestly. Like everyone wants to come in here with their counter attack and their reflect damage, stuff like that. And that is good for clearing it initially, but if you're trying to do speed runs of it, you really do just need to be working on a speed team. And not everyone has a counter attack champion or reflect damage. So this is definitely the most consistent method across the board. Anyone can get pretty much any of these champions. Stagnite is available from the battle pass right now. Rosin Scarhide is a fully fusible rare or uh, legendary. And then Apothecary, a pretty common rare for people to have. And finally, two uncommons that you can buy from the market. So nothing crazy going on with this team. There goes the turn meter. It's never coming back up. We just won this fight. We just have to wait for the team to catch up. <laughs> so we'll just run it through. We're probably going to be looking around three minutes. Just like the spider, this is a death by a thousand cut strategy. In fact, this is the exact same team as we run in spider, except Rosin Scarhide is coming in here to replace Miscreated Monster. And honestly, Miscreated Monster can do it. I used to bring him in here for it, but that's why it wasn't 100% consistent, just because uh, he could not stay alive to save himself. There we go. We've already got him over halfway down. We got probably another 10 seconds. Turn meter, never an issue. Getting in the big hits from Armager here. Should be seeing one more, and then we will be done. Drop the turn meter. Oh, it got resisted. Darn, so that's going to make it take slightly longer, but three minutes and four seconds. Not at all bad for Fire Knight. That is a good time. And now we are done with all of the main dungeons. That's Apothecary going through all of those. He's an amazing champion for dungeon content and also an amazing champion for the clan boss. So a lot of people probably don't think this, but Apothecary is fully viable all the way up through Ultra Nightmare. As you can see here, uh, where is it? I did 27.71 million on a key with Apothecary. He is normally on my team, and that was after Affinity changed. Normally it's over 30 million, and that's a full auto. So, I mean, he's amazing. I could not replace him with anybody except maybe Siffy, and Siffy is a legendary, so that's saying something. Crisk maybe also could come in here and fill this spot, but Void legendaries versus a rare, like, it, it's just insane. So let's go ahead and do another run on here. Uh, you know what, I'm actually not going to hit Nightmare because my clan uh, has someone doing their Arbiter missions today, so the damage is just not available. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here into Brutal, and we're going to drop our team just a little bit to make it more accessible. So, let's see here, who do we want to bring in? We've got Apothecary, we've got uh, Banshee, we're going to take Arbiter out. Who do we want? Uh, they should be able to handle poison. So we want a decrease attack and weaken, or decrease defense and weaken as well as decrease attack. So let's go ahead and bring Tayrell in here. Uh, I don't think we're gonna be able to pick up a weaken unless I bring Arbiter or Rosin in, which I don't wanna do. So I'm gonna bring in a Steel Skull and we're going to bring in Hmm, we've got one more slot to fill. Normally that would be Arbiter's slot, so I don't actually know who I want to bring in here. Stagnite, but we already have those roles filled. So I think... Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. This is craziness. Paralyzed with choices. I think I'm going to just bring in Rosin Scarhide for the weekend. And we are on a spirit affinity, so he's not going to do that great, but this team should be just fine. And so we're going to go ahead and get into it here. Now, unfortunately, with this team, uh, only I think Tayrell and Frozen Banshee are in Lifesteal, or Steel Skull is as well. So Rosin and Apothecary are not, but they should be just fine. Apothecary can normally keep people topped off, 
especially because he's running so fast and his heal is on a two turn cooldown. So he can definitely keep our Rosin going. Uh, he will probably be the first to drop since it is a spirit affinity, but that's just kind of how it goes. So we are going to be pretty fast for fighting on Brutal, which is nice because this is a speed team. We want to be taking as many turns as possible before the clan boss goes. And since it is a spirit affinity clan boss as well, it should be dropping our speed every once in a while. So that is something that we will have to contend with. But since we are so fast, that'll make up for it, which is nice. So anyways, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and let this play through. We're just going to go completely auto and we'll see how we did at the end. Alrighty, so we're coming up towards the end of the fight here. We're about five minutes in. And I forgot that Rosin actually doesn't have Giant Slayer on because I've been using him for Arena. So he's definitely not going to be putting out the amount of damage you'd be used to on a Rosin. We're looking pretty good. I think we're going to hit about six minutes for this total run. Apothecary goes down there, but as you can see, he outlasted these two, even though he wasn't in lifesteal gear. That's because he's very good at sustaining himself, he goes fast, he has the heals, and he really just keeps us doing a bunch of damage, keeping us moving quick, and that's the basis of a speed team, which definitely brings out the most damage in the game at the highest levels. But there you go, that's a one key on Brutal without even having a Giant Slayer on my Rosin Scar hide. Granted, Frozen da Banshee brought most of that damage, but it's really thanks to Apothecary allowing her to take enough turns that she can be placing all of those poisons alongside her poison sensitivity. Yes, yeah, so that's what Apothecary brings to the game. He is an amazing rare. Uh, he's also very good in lower level arena. I don't really have him set up well for arena right now, so I'm not going to bring him in there because it would just be a slaughter fest at the level I'm at. That being said, thank you for watching, guys. Subscribe if you're interested in seeing future content and comment down below anything you would like to see me do specifically. And thanks.